What's up, you tens of thousands of small businesses who come here to find out what's going on in the small business world legally and legislatively and how we can stand together to get that $10,000 idle grant that was promised to you in the CARES Act. We are still fighting for that. And we have just had a small business hearing that I would thought maybe come around to a piece of evidence showing proof that we can get that 10000 or a piece of evidence showing they're fighting against it. And guys, right now, Rand Paul, he's fighting against it. But Ben Cardin still loves that policy map. He is all in on the policy map. Not only is he all in on the policy map, but he's making new legislation and putting new legislation out there for the SBA to follow that has what in it? The policy map for more businesses to go through. Can you believe that? Well, it's true. And if you didn't see that small business committee hearing that Rand Paul had today, and uh, his quote was this. It was amazing. It was a beautiful quote. He had said, the science didn't change, but the polls certainly have. The science didn't change, but the polls certainly have. And he's correct about that. The polls have changed. They have swung in the, in the favor of small businesses. The polls have changed because the government was just about to issue, the Biden administration was just about to issue another forced mandate for small businesses to make sure people prove they're vaccinated for one. The local government is forcing business owners to act as the vaccine police. Today, Washington, D.C. was supposed to increase their vaccine passport mandate to bar those who are not fully vaccinated from frequenting local small businesses, such as restaurants, concert venues, or gyms. But they have since changed their tune, and as of today, are now ending the indoor mask mandates and vaccine passports altogether. We can all say, a hooray. So with that legislation being nixed at the bud right now, because you stood up, we stood up. America has stood up and said, we are not going to take it anymore. Like the old Twisted Sister song had said. They didn't come to this conclusion on their own, of course. Pushback from parents and business owners have convinced them that these measures are deeply unpopular and no longer politically viable. So that's great that that's not politically viable for them anymore to have mask mandates and vaccine mandates in order for you to get into a restaurant or a business of your choice to get your goods. Right now, America has pushed against that and small businesses hopefully can get back into operating the way they need to. And that is why we are going to now talk about the positive news that is out there for the restaurant revitalization. And then we will go over the policy map that Ben Cardin still seems to be a great big fan of, and I'll show you exactly how he's implementing it on the next bill. So there's going to be a round coming for re restaurant v revitalization that should get plenty of backing by the Democrats and by the Republicans. Why? Because, well, the, the restaurants got screwed. They got screwed, and it's been so long, I'm, I'll be... Oh, I'm just so happy that some of them are still hanging on by a thread and hopefully this money can get there sooner than later, Ben. And so get it to the floor like you should have taken S513 to the floor for the idle grant. But as we can see, you're not even you're not in on that no more. So we, we get it. We get it. How you turned your back on small businesses for the grant. But let me go over this uh, good news for the restaurants. It should be coming and it should be coming very soon. So here's the new update on Ben Cardin and the RRF. He says they're there's a new round of aid for the restaurants, others likely to be the last. I'm pushing hard to include it in the omnibus package. Ben Cardin is the small business chairman in the Senate. That's why it's so important that what he does goes to the floor because he is like the, the grand poopa in that category for small businesses, as most of you already know. If you don't, you do now. And he says down here, we're not going to be asking to come back again for any additional funds. This is it. We're not coming back for any additional COVID funds. The idle was an economic injury disaster loan. The money that has been put into place for, to give those loans out, there's not more coming in. The grants are done. They're not going to be putting those back in. So in order for the grants to come back in, there would have to be a heavy, heavy push for the idle grants and from the small business owners of America to push forward and say, hey, I didn't get my 10K that was promised to me in the CARES Act. I got wasted by that policy map and in order for the small businesses to get that ben card would probably have to be removed from office for that to happen because he is totally still on top of the policy map however for restaurants this is amazing news and i am very very excited about this for you to get those funds that you were uh, looking for let me go down a little bit further um, and he said last week that they have a tentative agreement that should be able to get 60 votes in the Senate. All they need is 51. If they have 60 votes in the Senate, it looks like this is going to be passed and they'll get that, this to the floor pretty quick. 
And then he said, it looks like the next train is going to be the omnibus. I'm pushing hard to include it in the omnibus. So that's going to be the name of the package that the RRF is going to be in. So we'll keep our eyes out on the omnibus package. Now, the problem with an omnibus package is if they include too much, if they end up putting stuff in there that's just that the Republicans do not agree with, then it could be stricken down and it it could be a wash for everybody if they end up doing stupid again in this omnibus package like they did last time and they made it racist instead of what it should be is going out to all small businesses, not just some. It should be all of America, all of Americans together. And it says they were reluctant to share the details as they always are. They don't go over the details until it's finalized. And then everybody gets to find out exactly the good and the bad that's in the package. So we're not going to know that. But it says right here that the grant program drew more than 278,000 applicants. But only about a third of the restaurants and bars that applied received some of the $28.6 billion that Congress had appropriated. So we remember why. A lot of the, com- the companies, the bit restaurants out there didn't get it. They did get it. Actually, some some of the companies out there got the, the funds, but other companies, because they were skipped, the companies that had gotten the funds had to give those funds back and give it to the companies that were in line first. So they were going in order of who applied. And then they ended up taking it back and saying, wait, no, we got to make sure the underserved get it. We got to make sure these communities get it. And they started uh, dividing it up among the underserved and giving it all to the underserved instead of giving it to those that were in line due to whether it was what color they were or not. So they ended up going back in line. They ended up going back in order. And here is the logistics of who's going to get it for the restaurants that are in the queue is because it says there will not be a new application process for restaurants and bars that did not apply for the last round. So if you did not apply, you don't get to apply for it. Now Cardin said, and while he would, wouldn't divulge exactly how much will be spent this time. He said it won't be more than $48 billion. The amount of that he and Wicker proposed in the bill they introduced in August to backfill the restaurant revitalization fund. And if you know, I believe that most of that is coming from the idle grant program surplus that they had because they did not give the small businesses the $10,000 grant. So there was like, I believe $30 billion left in those funds for the supplemental and the targeted idol, both that is going to be going into that. So the government would only have to be putting out another 18 billion to, uh, to approve this package. And so that won't be hard to pass because the money is actually already in, in the uh, financing. As it says down here, the funding for small business packages will come from a mix of unobligated funds from prior pandemic aid packages and will be repurposed to new appropriations. Those were the idle grant funds. We don't have enough unused money, he said, so we will repurpose whatever we can, but we're not going to need more resources. So after when this money is out there for the restaurants, whoever gets it, gets it. Whoever doesn't is out of luck. They're, they're estimating that it's going to be about $48 billion to fund everybody that was already in, in, the, in line for the application. So if you were in line for the application, you should be able to get it. So now let's go into the policy map. What's going on with the policy map? We all need to know that as far as those who want their idle grants or if it if that would be removed and new appropriations would be. This puts a damper on the idle grants, big time. So what I just read as far as Ben Cardin saying, we're not going to be putting any more funding out for COVID. We're not going to be doing COVID no more. Basically, the Dems have given up on their, it's pandemic related. There's no more pandemic related anything. Most of us know the Democrats are just following the polls. So if the polls don't look bad for them, they'll go in the ways where the polls start looking better for them. That's politics. The Republicans do it too. So in the committee meeting today, we heard Ben Cardin talk about a couple bills and a couple of the Republicans, including Rand Paul and uh, a few others, uh, Senator Ernst and Senator Marshall, have voted no on a bill that I was reading up on yesterday. And I noticed that it had said something about the policy map and Ben Cardin's name was on top of it. Of course, Ben Cardin writes a lot of bills up for small businesses. And this one was called the SBIC, the Small Business Investment Company Act that he was putting out. And with the bill that he put out is S2521. Rand Paul, during that meeting today that I had showed you earlier, that meeting, he had voted no against it, along with Marshall and Ernst. Hawley came in to vote no for another one. But uh, they voted no for this. And I was I knew exactly why Rand Paul and those members put their name on the no list. It's because it includes the policy map. So Ben Cardin, as he's making, drawing up his bills and stuff, he's still including the policy map. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So here's the bill. It's the S2521. 
2521 SBIC Working Group Act of 2021, sponsor Ben Cardin. Um, and as you can see, there's one more co-sponsor on it who is a Republican from Indiana. However, he has a hashtag against his name so he can always withdraw. Um, but I'm going to go down here and in the bill, it says the terms licensee, small business investment company and under license have been have the meanings of those terms given to Section 301 of the Small Business Invect Investment Act. Okay, and here it is in number four, right below that. The term low community has the meaning giving, given in the term section of 45DE of the IRC Code of 1986. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the same uh, legislative text that they had put in to the uh, idle grants for small business uh, for small businesses policy map. Whenever you see section 45 DE of the IRC code of 12, 1986, they get their information and who's going to get the funds by implementing the policy map against Americans who don't live in the purple zones. So Ben Cardin has just put up another bill. And this is why I believe Rand Paul voted no against it as well did Ernst and Marshall voting no against this bill. And hopefully the rest of uh, the Republicans and they can get Manchin and Sinema on their side or some other Democrat on their side to shut, to shut this down because it's not fair to America. This is a restrictive policy map. If any of you all have not heard about this yet, it is basically a, a prejudice map that puts people in categories of where they live, whether they're going to get money or not. It's totally political. It's totally polling and it's totally racist, literally racist against America. It is a very divisive map. And Ben Cardin, I wish you would quit doing this to Americans who are hardworking. You cannot be segregating America like this. And there will be more backlash to be heard from. I know the election's coming up in November. And Ben, you're on the chopping block. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's spitting in the faces of small businesses. It's literally just a blow like if you live in a certain area, you don't count. And I, I live in a middle class area in Tampa, Florida, upper Tampa, Florida, North Tampa. And there are businesses, there are homes around me that are million dollar homes. But then right a couple blocks down, there's there's trailers that are probably worth five thousand dollars, not even that homeless people could pretty much squat in. I'm just saying that th this community, this is America. I mean, you've got literally people who make $10,000 a year living next to people who make $10 million a year. So having a policy map doesn't give the story of who's needing money and whose funds are needed and they need to get rid of this. And I am just so upset and so concerned about where this country is going as far as putting us in a, a zone, a district, it sounds like Hunger Games, that you don't get this or you do get this depending on where your address is. So guys and girls, this is the update for today. Hopefully you got the information that you needed for the RRF and for the policy map and, uh, and more as we just went over as far as the mask mandates go for restaurants. So there's been some good news in here and there's been so not so good news in here. The good news is the restaurants are looking good. It's coming soon, probably within the next couple of weeks, they should be able to get this thing passed and those restaurants that are still hanging on, on by a thread can get those funds that they needed to uh, keep moving forward in their business. Guys, I wanna thank you all for watching. I'm gonna continue fighting for you regarding this policy map, regarding those of you who have not gotten the idle grants and in those businesses that are in dire need of attention in order for to get help that they were turned away from with the administration putting this policy map in. Guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And uh, quick shout out to Jason McElhom. And somebody say, hey, I still want my 10K. Yeah.